Hello students, welcome to Knowledge Quest. This is an English series and I'm your teacher Rwanda Stanley. And uh, we pick it from where we stopped in our last lesson. We have been doing parts of speech. We have done nouns, we have done verbs, we have done adjectives and today we are doing adverbs. So we'll start by understanding the term adverb, what it means and how adverbs are used in sentences. An adverb to begin with is a word that is used to modify three things. One is a verb, it modifies a verb. Two, modifies an adverb. And three, it modifies an adjective. We use adverbs in a sentence to make the, the meaning of the sentence more specific so that we are particular, we do not cause ambiguity. That is the function of an adverb. And when we say to modify, the term that we are using here is that it modifies these three. To modify means simply to add information, an extra information on that verb, on that adjective, or another adverb. For example, the hockey team played well. So we have a sentence here, the hockey team played well. And in our lesson when we learned about parts of sentences, we said there is a subject, there is a verb, and there is the, pre, uh, the, the, the object, which can be either direct or indirect. And lastly, we said there is a complement. And so in this sentence, we have the verb played. This is our verb. Now, how did the hockey team play? The hockey team played well. So well is our adverb that modifies the verb. It modifies the verb played. So remember, we said it will modify a verb. So in a sentence, we can say the word well modifies the verb played. In another sentence, for example, we can say that the stadium is nearly full. So our sentence here is the stadium is nearly full. So which is the verb? The verb is is, which is an auxiliary verb. It's not an action verb, it's a helping verb. But in this case, functioning as a main verb in the sentence. But we're saying the stadium is full. But to qualify that fullness, we're saying it is nearly Nearly is our adverb, full. So the word that we are modifying here is the word full, which is modified by nearly. So this is an adjective, and this is an adverb. So in this sentence, the word nearly is our adverb that qualifies the fullness of the stadium. It is not full to the capacity, it's nearly. That means it's almost full. So it is modifying the adjective full. In another sentence, to show how an adverb can be used to 
modify another adverb is, for example, uh, she visits quite often. So we can simply say in this sentence that she visits often. That means she frequently visits. But then we want to qualify. Sometimes, you know, it depends with how you pick the meaning of the sentence or what we're implying. But when we say, for example, she visits quite often, then the word quite is our adverb, still modifying the word often. As we're going to find out the, that all these are uh, examples of adverbs, but various types. So we're saying this sentence, she visits quite often, the adverb quite modifies another adverb, which is often, right? Uh, we continue by understanding another use of adjective, uh, adverb, sorry. Other than just modifying the three adverbs, that is uh, the, the three words, that is the verb, the adverb, and the adjective, they can also be used to modify clauses or full sentences. For example, if we say in an example in a sentence, honestly, we must work harder. So in such kind of a sentence, honestly, we must work harder, we have the word honestly, which is our adverb, modifying the entire clause, that is, we must work harder. We must work harder is an independent clause, and it's modified by the word honestly. And so, we conclude the introduction by saying that adverbs can be used to uh, introduce or to modify uh, verbs, to modify adverbs, to modify adjectives, and to modify entire clauses or sentences. All right? Adverbs can also be used to tell us, and in most of uh, the uses in sentences, adverbs are used to, to tell us when an action takes place, where an action takes place, and how an action takes place. So these are the three major functions of adverbs. We have very many other functions, but we're saying these are the three main functions, that they will tell us where, they'll tell us when, and they'll tell us how an action takes place or something was done. They may also tell us to what extent adverbs can also tell us to what extent something was done. They can also tell us how many times they can also tell us how many times an action or something was done and they can also tell us for for what reason was that thing or that action done? For what uh, uh, reason was, was that something done? So basically we have said adverbs tell us when, they tell us where, they tell us how something was done, they also tell us to what extent that something or that action was done, they also tell us how many times that action was done or is done, and lastly, for what reason that action is done. They give us specific information about time, place, frequency, among many other uh, reasons that we use the adverbs in sentences. And so, having learned uh, the function or the general information about adverbs, then let's look at now the types of adverbs. So we are going to look at various types of adverbs so that we understand now more specifically what each type of an adverb does in a sentence. 
we begin with uh, one adverbs of time. So the first type we're going to look at is an adverb of uh, an adverb of time. An adverb of time tells us when an action was done. An adverb of time will tell us when an action was done in terms of time. Can be the actual time, can be the date or the month or the year. When was the action done? So we simply answer the question when. If you want to identify uh, the type of an adverb and you want to specifically identify an adverb of time, you'll ask yourself, when was the action done? For example, in sentences, uh, in, in, we have various examples of adverbs of time such as soon, now, then, today, yesterday, Uh, we also have, for example, early. All these are examples of adverbs of time. But now, how do we use them in sentences? For instance, um, if we were to say, for example, the event will begin soon. So how do we identify the adverb in this sentence? We will simply say, or ask ourselves this question, when will the event begin? And the answer is soon. So soon is our adverb of time. So the simple question is, when will the event begin? And the answer is soon. So soon is our adverb of time. Another example in a sentence. Will be. The crew. Will. Leave. Early. So the simple question that you will ask yourself is. When will the crew leave? And the answer is early. So early is our adverb of time. We can again look at another one example in a sentence so that we get the deep, deeper understanding. If we say, this is our third example in a sentence, come and see me later. Come and see me later. What question will we ask? We'll ask, when will I see you? Or when should I come and see you? And the simple answer is later. So later is our adverb of time. So remember we have said that adverbs of time answer the question when. When did the action take place? When will it take place? Or when has it taken place? Right? We go to the second example, the second type of adverbs. And we look at um, adverbs of place. So the first one was adverbs of time. Now we're looking at adverbs of place. And here, these adverbs answer one question, where? So whenever you have adverbs in a sentence, just ask yourself where. If there is a word in that sentence that answers the question where, then no, that is an adverb of time, of place, sorry. So that means adverbs of place will tell us where an action took place or will take place or has taken place depending on time. For example, we have uh, examples of adverbs of uh, place like here, there, uh, in town, 
in town, sorry. Inside, above, out, etc. They can be very many. For example, you would say even around, you can say things like nearby, away. All those are adverbs of time, of place, sorry. So how do we use them in sentences? When we want to use adverbs of uh, place in sentences to show where an action took place, we can use an example like, uh, the fat boy fell inside. We can say, for example, the fat boy fell inside. So, what question will you ask us uh, so that we identify the adverb of place? We'll ask, where did the boy fall? And the answer is, inside. So, inside is our adverb of place. Where did the boy fall? And the answer is, the boy fell inside. So, inside tells us where the action of falling took place. Another example in a sentence, we can say the students came in. The students came in. So, what do we have here? In is our adverb. And we got the adverb by asking the question, where did the students come? They came in. So in is our adverb of place. Another example of an adverb of place used in a sentence, you can say, the man walked away. So the question is, where did the man walk? And you answer, away. So, away is our adverb of place. One last example before we take a short break is, for example, uh, the example is the dark waited nearby as the ducklings took their first swim. So this is our example, our last example. The duck waited nearby as the ducklings took their first swim. So the question again here is, where did the duck wait? The answer is nearby. So nearby is our adverb of place, answering the question where the duck waited. We take a short break and when we come back we look at more examples of more types of adverbs. back students before we went for a short break we had looked at two types of adverbs adverb of time and an adverb of place you identify an adverb of time by asking the question when and you identify the adverb of place by asking the question where all of them will indicate when or where the action takes place respect respectively now our third example uh, is adverb of manner. 
So we're looking at now an adverb of manner. Adverbs of manner answer one simple question, and they answer the question, how? So when we are identifying an adverb of manner, we ask the question, how did the action take place? How was it done? So that way we identify the adverb of manner. For example, they include quickly, charmingly, slowly, um, fast, we have well, angrily, bravely, etc. We have so many of adverbs of manner. This is the largest group of adverbs that we have. And you can find the common uh, uh, way of forming them is by adding ly at the end. It's the largest group of adverbs that we have. These are some of the examples we have. Quickly, charmingly, slowly, fast, well, angrily, bravely. And there are many more. So how do we use them now in sentences? Let's look at examples in sentences. So remember our major question here of identification is how. An example in a sentence. For example, she eats slowly. So what question will you ask here? The question is, how does she eat? And the answer is slowly. So this is our adverb of manner. Answering the question, how she eats. Another example. The father walked in quickly. So what question will we ask here? How did the father walk in? And the answer is quickly. So quickly becomes our adverb of manner. All right. Another example in a sentence. The boys are playing roughly. The boys are playing roughly. What question again do we ask? The question is how? How are the boys playing? And the answer is the boys are playing roughly. So roughly gives us the adverb of manner. So identify by simply asking how, right? Adverbs of manner tell us how action takes place. Ask the question, how did the action take place? How is it taking place? How will it take place? Then you will have your adverb of manner. We go to the fourth type of adverbs. So the fourth type of adverb that we look at is adverbs of degree. Adverbs of degree. Remember we have looked at adverbs of time, place and manner. Now we're looking at adverbs of degree. We also call them intensifiers. They intensify the meaning that has been already highlighted by the previous adverb by answering the question how much or how little. So these are the two questions we'll be asking ourselves when we're identifying the adverbs of degree. They can modify an adjective or an adverb. We're simply saying that adverbs of degree can modify an adjective or an adverb. And they include words such as, they include very, 
quite extremely rather to poorly etc they can be very many more you can say excellently etc so these are intensifiers words that are used to intensify simply as the word insinuates to emphasize or to give more emphasis on an adjective or an adverb that has been already identified examples in sentences So remember the two questions that we'll be looking at is how much or how little. Those are the, ad, uh, the questions we'll be asking so that we identify the adverb of degree. For example, one, she plays the ball extremely well so the sentence is she plays the ball extremely well and so what do we ask here how much does she play the ball extremely well so this is an adverb of degree and remember in the same sentence we have another adverb that is well how does she play the ball well but remember we said this uh, that answers the question how is an adverb of manner so we have two adverbs here that means the adverb extremely modifies the adverb well adverb modifying an adverb this will recur in many of the examples we'll give because that is the uh, definition that we give another example in a sentence I cannot, sorry, I cannot eat this food. It is rather cold. So we have our sentence here, I cannot eat this food. It is rather cold. So our adverb here is rather this is our adverb of degree, the extent to which the food is cold, and the word cold is simply an adjective. So this uh, adverb rather modifies the adjective cold, as we began by saying that adverbs of degree can modify adjectives or adverbs by intensifying the meaning being more specific more particular in what you want to capture because if you say food food is cold it can be seven degrees cold or maybe 10 degrees so you never know but if we say rather we are more specific it's a little bit cold so this is the adverb of degree right let's look at our other type of degree, another type of uh, adverb that is, and we look at adverbs of frequency. So we're looking at adverbs of frequency. What's the difference between adverbs of frequency? from adverbs of degree. Frequency tells us, or the answer, the simple question, how, how often, how often does an action take place? Does it take place every day? Does it take place weekly? Does it take place hourly? Is it yearly? How often does that action take place? 
So to identify an adverb of frequency, we ask the question, how often does this action take place? So you have to identify the action, obviously. They include words like uh, daily, yearly, hourly. We have words like uh, weekly, fortnightly, and uh, so many other words that we can have, etc. But now we look at the uses now in sentences. For example, uh, this is our fifth type. My father comes home daily. My father comes home daily. So the question is, how often does my father come home? And the answer is daily. So daily is our adverb of frequency. How often does my father come home? And the answer is daily. So daily is our adverb of frequency. Another example in a sentence. The second example is we, we seldom meet with Javan. We seldom meet with Javan. How often do we meet with Javan? And the answer is seldom. We seldom meet with Javan. That means we don't meet with him every time, maybe once in a while. We seldom meet with Javan. So seldom is our adverb of frequency. As simple as that. How often does the action take place? A third example in a sentence. Third example, she does her exercises weekly, weekly. Note that our weekly is double E, not A. If it were A, it would be uh, an adverb of manner, but now weekly. How often does she do her exercises? She does it, or she does them weekly, so this is our adverb of frequency. Right? So it's as simple as that. Identifying how often the action is done, and then you have your adverb of frequency. Correct? We go to our sixth type of adverb. This is what we call conjunctive adverbs. Conjunctive adverbs. These are adverbs that are used to join independent clauses. Adverbs that we use to join independent clauses. And here I will take one minute to explain what an independent clause is. An independent clause, or what we call in other terms a main clause in a sentence, is a, a clause that can express a complete thought, does not require an addition of another clause so that it makes a full meaning, but it is simply stands on its own. That's an independent clause, just as the word says, independent. It relies on itself to express the full meaning. So a conjunctive adverb will pick two, for example, independent clauses, and it will join them. For example, an example in a sentence. He has not finished his assignment. semicolon therefore 
comma, and watch the punctuation of this uh, conjunctive adverbs. Therefore, I will not allow him in. So our sentence is, he has not finished his assignment. Therefore, I will not allow him in. So how do we identify it? We have two main clauses. He has not finished his assignment. And two, I will not allow him in. Which word remains? Therefore. So therefore is our conjunctive adverb. And what this does is to link the two, to express the complete meaning, to tell us the consequence of him not doing an assignment. He will not be allowed in, in by him. When we use a conjunctive adverb in a sentence, note that before the adverb we have a semicolon. We don't use any other punctuation mark. And after the conjunctive adverb we have a comma. That's the correct punctuation because it can be tested in the rewrite questions. Another example of a sentence, for example, although I started, although I started the exam late, I answered all the questions in time. So, there are two main clauses. I started the exam late. Two, I answered all the questions in time. So, what is the, quest what is the question here now? Which word remains? It's although. So, although is our um, conjunctive Adverb. When we say conjunctive adverb, a conjunction is simply a word that links or joins. So it is joins the two clauses. And remember, when we begin with a conjunctive adverb, the two phrases or the two clauses are separated using a comma. Something to note. Other examples will include, however, they will include consequently, for instance, in addition to etc. Nevertheless, there are so many of them, conjunctive adverbs, correct? So you can pick a few and get more clauses and join them, and you will see that we have what we call a, 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 a complex sentence that is joined using a conjunctive adverb. Another type, as we are near to the end of our lesson today, of adverbs is what we call interrogative adverbs. To interrogate is simply to ask. So when we talk about interrogative adverbs, we're talking about adverbs that will help us introduce so the simple function of interrogative adverbs is to introduce questions. That is the function of an interrogative adverb. So those that we were saying how you ask, now this is where we come. Examples in sentence. One, for example, where did he go? Now, this is asking a question. So the answer will give us now an adverb of place. But before we get the adverb of place, we have the question, where did he go? So we have where as our interrogative adverb. So that's how we identify. When is he coming? So leading us to identifying an adverb of time, but now because it's asking a question when becomes now our interrogative adverb. Or another example that we could have is how does he walk? How does he walk? So the word how will lead us to the adverb of manner if we were to answer the question, for example, 
he walks slowly. So the slowly will give us now adverb of manner. But in this sentence, because it's asking a question, we say, how is our interrogative adverb? That's simply what we call an adverb, an interrogative adverb. Adverbs that are used to ask a question or to introduce questions. And lastly, as we conclude, is what we call as we conclude today's lesson is what we call negative adverbs. So these are adverbs that will show or will connote a negative meaning. And they include words such as nor, rarely, seldom, neither, we have hardly, barely, we have scarcely, etc. So all these words denote or connote a negative meaning. So that's why we call them negative adverbs. And mostly you find they are used to link clauses again. And something to note is, when, whenever we begin, and I want you to note this keenly, whenever we begin with a negative adverb in a sentence, it changes or it affects the structure of a sentence. And that is what leads to what we call in grammar inversion when the verb comes before the subject doing the action. For instance, if we say, rarely, remember rarely has been picked from one of the examples of negative adverbs, we can say rarely does he take supper. Rarely does he take supper. So the word rarely is our negative adverb, but again, see how the structure is affected. Does he? So here we have the verb comes, coming before the subject. When that occurs, because in normal sentences we have the subject and the verb. For example, he rarely comes home. He rarely takes supper. So the he comes before the verb. But when the verb comes now before the subject, then we say that this is an inversion. That's what happens when we begin with negative adverbs. Alright, so today we have learned adverbs as part of parts of speech and in our learning of adverbs we have learned various types. We begin with adverbs of time, adverbs of place, adverbs of manner, adverbs of degree. We looked at adverbs of frequency, we looked at interrogative adverbs and we have lastly looked at Um, interrogative, sorry, we have lastly looked at negative adverbs. And also, we looked at conjunctive adverbs. Remember, adverbs are words that will show or we modify verbs, adverbs, adjectives, and even entire clauses or sentences. Till the next lesson, I have been your teacher, Rwanda Stanley. Thank you for following. It's your favorite program, Knowledge Quest.